Hello and congratulations for taking your first step and getting access to this video course that will teach you how to build not only your backlinks by utilizing PDF files and uploading them to high authority sites, but I'm also going to talk about how you can convert that traffic, those prospects that you're going to get to read your PDF and pre-sell them enough to gain their trust and convert them into the sales. So by the time they get to your website, you've got targeted traffic. So we're going to have a win-win situation here, and we're going to essentially kill two birds with one stone by achieving these two different things. All right. So this is video number one, and this is going to be the introduction and a quick overview. So what I want to do right now is talk about the video course as a whole. So you understand exactly what you're going to learn, because what I believe is once you're able to learn how things work, how the system works and it's put together, you'll be able to implement it a lot faster. All right. So this is video number one. Video number two is going to be about choosing your attack plan. There are many different routes that you can go towards. So as far as trying to create a piece of content and essentially a PDF later on that will convert your prospects into potential sales, you need to have an, a good attack plan first, right? So I'm going to help you with that in video number two. Once you have figured out your attack plan in video number two, we can move on to video number three, which is creating your content. So now that we have figured out an angle of how we want to approach things, now we can create the content. So once you know that creating the content is super easy, and I'll show you more in that particular video. And then once we have the content in place, we can spice things up and we can make it look pretty. So I'm going to give you access to certain resources that you can use to do just that. And video number five, we're going to talk about different types of hyperlinks so that when you're editing your content via Microsoft Word, and this can be compatible with whether you're using a Mac computer or Windows computer, we want to talk about different hyperlinks and the way they work within Microsoft Word. And then after you have finished everything, video number six, I want to talk about things you need to gather. So besides the PDF, what do you else do you need to gather? Then in video number seven and eight, we're going to talk about two different PDF conversion softwares. Now I really want to focus on these two because these are two that I personally use. I've tested tons and tons of different PDF conversion softwares out there over the past many, many years. But I've came to the conclusion that I found two that are really, really good. They definitely take the headaches out because when you convert a normal Microsoft Word document to a PDF, utilizing a lot of the free PDF converter tools out there, they don't really convert the hyperlinks. So you could either dish out money to buy the $400 Adobe Acrobat Pro, or you can spend a lot less, about 10 times less for these software tools. So I'm going to talk about basic conversion factors as far as basic hyperlinks go. Now, if you want to take things further and you want to say, for example, hyperlink an image, a hotspot, you want to maybe hyperlink a specific area, then you will need to have a more advanced piece of software. And I'll talk more about that in video number eight. But keep in mind that we are focusing on a lot of these softwares that are not going to break the bank for you. So in other words, they're not definitely $400 $300 or even $200 or even $100. So they're a lot cheaper than that. And of course, last but not least, we have video number nine, and we'll talk about how to upload your PDF files to the right sites 
and how to generate backlinks from high authority websites. Now, before we end this video, I want to talk about mindset because I feel like that is a crucial thing before you can actually jump right in. I know you're excited, but before we do that, I want to say that the whole goal of this system and this video course and this blueprint is this is not just pure SEO. Our goal here is a long-term strategy to provide good, high-quality content that essentially will get you backlinks. Now, if you know anything about the search engines, Google, Yahoo, they obviously are catering to the person who is searching. They're not catering to the advertisers. So with that said, they want to make sure that whatever the experience is for that prospect, for that visitor who is typing in the keyword, looking for things is good. So this is a long-term strategies and I've been doing this for a decade, over decades. And what I've seen is a lot of backlinking strategies come and go. But this one is likely not to come and go. It's more likely to be a long-term strategy because this has been going on for about for a decade. So I'm going to show you something that is a long-term view, but it's not pure SEO. It's conversion SEO. So the question is not just how can we get backlinks, but how can you convert your traffic and rank at the same time? So our goal is not just to get traffic, but get the traffic, get the prospect, get the visitor to read your PDF file. They like your PDF file, they trust you, and then they seek you out. That kind of customer is a lot more powerful because they're more likely to buy a lot of your products and services because they like your content. So before we get started, I want to talk about the things that you need. You need to figure out what are you selling? And I'll talk more about that in video number two, when we talk about the attack plants. And then I want to make sure that you have links to your websites and they are ready. It's okay if you don't have them now, but it's just something that you need to think about and you need to have in hand. Then of course you need to have access to software. And I'll elaborate further when we get to that point. But I just want to make sure that you are aware that we, unfortunately you cannot achieve the hyperlinking process with a lot of the PDF conversion tools that are free. A lot of them will do things like add watermarks to your PDFs and you don't want that. You want to have your own brand on your PDF. Now we are going to be using two pieces of software. One is called QPDF Professional, and I've been using that for a long, long time, well over about a decade, and they've been around from a long, long time. Or you can also use WinZip. WinZip is great, but it's pretty basic, and it's a win-win situation because you can also zip files up. You can actually do a lot more than just zipping files, believe it or not. So with that said, those are the things that you need. Other than that, you don't really need anything else. You don't need to invest any more money. And you definitely don't need the $400 or $450 Adobe Acrobat Pro software, which you can do a lot with, but you don't really need to dish out a lot of money. What I found over the years, and we've tested a lot of PDF conversion tools, is that a lot of them are actually more expensive than WinZip or Cute PDF Professional combined. So I'm showing you the best of the best, in my opinion, and of course, the ones that we have tested that will not break your wallet or break the bank. All right, so with that said, let's move on to video number two, and we'll talk about creating your attack plan. Hello and welcome back. This is video number two. And in this particular video, I'm going to help you choose your attack plan. Once you have chosen your attack plan, everything else is going to be easy as far as creating the right content that is angled towards a specific prospect. Our goal is not just to get backlinks, as I stated earlier, 
but also to get as many conversions, as many people buying our product or service, or as many people signing up on your list or taking whatever action that you are trying to get them to take. All right. So first things first, what you need to do is you need to figure out what are you selling? There are two different avenues here. Are you selling your own product or service? Meaning you're trying to generate leads for yourself. You're trying to build a list for yourself, or are you trying to brain yourself or are you trying to sell your product or service? If you're trying to sell your own product or service, or you're marketing your own product or service, then the content that you want to angle it towards will be in a different way. You'll be utilizing your own brand, your own experience, perhaps your own case studies and things like that. Now, the flip side of it is you're selling somebody else's product or service. This can be affiliate marketing. This could be maybe you're promoting their product as in taking a specific cut out of their business. I don't know, but only you know your direction better. So I want you to pick and choose because I'm going to hone in on number one, your own product or service, or number two, somebody else's products or service. So we have affiliate marketing and we have cost per action, which means that people get paid for sending leads. So for example, you could get paid for every time somebody fills out a form or takes a specific action. The next thing you need to figure out is who is your audience? The worst case scenario that a lot of people take is they figure out, okay, this is what I'm selling and I'm just going to go, go ahead and go ahead and write some content wrong. That's the worst case scenario. What you want to do is you want to figure out who your audience is. And what I mean by that is actually who is the demographics and what do they look like? What do they like? What do they dislike? What is, frustrates them and what are their problems? So to do that, what we want to do is we want to go to a website called quantcast.com, as you can see here, and we want to find some high authority competitors. The second thing we want to do is go to alexa.com. We want to copy and paste those high authority competitors into alexa.com and alexa.com will give us access to some demographics. At that point, we're going to go use another free tool and all these tools are free. We want to go to Facebook ad insights and that tool is run by Facebook ads. It allows you to see the full demographics, the likes, the dislikes, the overall spectrum of that particular audience and what they like, what they like as far as pages, how they engage with that niche and a lot more information. So, Without talking about it too much, I'm going to go straight to the sites and I'm going to quickly go through them fairly quick. So you can see that this is a process that you need to take, but this is also a process that should not take a lot of time. All right. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay. So this is going to be a quick and easy exercise. All you need to do is go to quantcast.com. That's Q U A N T cast.com as you can see here. If you want to follow along and pause this video, go ahead and do so now. Or if you want to wait till the end of the video and then apply it, that's fine. As long as you're taking some sort of action that is going to be moving you closer to success. Now, what we need to do is when we get to quantcast.com is click on explore. And the whole goal of this specific step number one, is to figure out a high authority domain name that is getting a lot of traffic already because at that point they have gathered enough data that you can use. So looking at a competitor that has already been established and then applying that to you is the easiest way to figure out who your demographics is. So who 
painting a picture of who your person, your audience looks like, essentially. That's what we're trying to do. So let's say, for example, we type in dog. And then, of course, what I recommend that you do is go to the website that you see here and make sure that it actually fits what you are trying to sell, or at least it is somewhat similar. If you're unable to find any results with quantcast.com, another avenue that you can take is by going to google.com, typing in the same keyword, and looking at the very top, look at the competitors that are paying for ads. Now, you don't necessarily have to click these, but what I recommend is just head on over to dogster.com and just make sure that this is the site that is similar to what you might be trying to sell. So if we go over here, let's just take a quick look. So we can see right off the bat, it seems to be a high authority content marketing based site with tons and tons of content about dogs and other animals. Now, if we go through here and we find that, okay, it's great. This is the site that matches what we're trying to do. If it doesn't, then of course you'll need to find another site. But if it does, then you can move on to step number two, which is simply going to alexa.com, entering the site here, click on find. And then of course, scrolling all the way to the very bottom. And as you can see, that reveals to us who visits dogster.com. That's what we're interested in because that is who the audience that we are going to speak to. Now, Alexa.com is going to give you only a partial amount of data because this is the free version. There is a paid version, but I don't recommend going down that route because you really don't need it if you follow my steps in step number three. So we can see that the majority of it is about female. It looks like about 90, 95% female and about 5% male or maybe for a very, very little percentage of male. Then we can see that these females have at least college or graduate school and they surf primarily at home. Now that's all the data that we need right now because we can always use the next step, which is Facebook ad audience insights. To get to this particular page, you have to go to www.facebook.com slash ads, ADS with an S slash audience dash insights. If you go to this specific URL, it's going to give you two options. And let's just go ahead and do that right now. The first option is to look at everybody on Facebook, and that's what I recommend that you do, unless you have a Facebook page that has been established and that has a good amount of fans. If that is the case, click on this and you'll get the exact demographic data of your page. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on everyone on Facebook because that's what I'm interested in. And as you can see it, you can specify country if you want to and age, if you know that off the bat, but I'm going to leave all that blank. I'm just interested in the interest. Now, if you get a big enough website, sometimes you can type in dogster and as you can see, it shows dogster website and dogster magazine. That's why I try to go for high authority and really big established companies. Now you could type in dog and you could look at it and make sure you get the same, the right thing. And you can see Snoop Dogg is on here. So that's obviously wrong. So that's a person and a celebrity. Now I'm going to go back to Dogster website and really what we're trying to do is figure out, does it match up? with Alexa. So we saw that it was a good amount of women. So 95% women and 5% men, as you can see here. And then as far as the age group goes, it's about 45 to about 65 plus that are interested in dogster.com. And those people are most likely going to be our audience as well. Now we can see out of the 5% men, it's about the same age. So they're likely married to these women. Now, if we scroll down, we can see other things like lifestyle. We can see relationship there. Most of them are married. We can see college. We can see job title. 
but we can stop at this point. We don't really need to go further because in the next video, I'm going to dive deeper into this so that we can figure out different content angles because whether you're selling an affiliate product or your own product or service, it doesn't matter. Really at the end of the day, we just got to figure out the audience demographics. Once we figure that out, everything else is going to be really, really easy and it's going to fall into place as you can see in the next video. So I'll see you in video number three. Hey, welcome back. This is video number three, and we're going to talk about creating content. So now that you have an attack plan, a direction to go towards, now we can begin to use that attack plan and apply it to the content that you'll be creating. Now, what I want to do is give you some sort of structure for your content. So if you chose your product, then listen carefully. This is kind of a structure. You can change it around a little bit, but as long as you adhere to the structure, you can always change the content, the, the specific way of writing the content, but you typically want to start with a problem question something to engage with them, something to provoke their thought. Always start with a question. You can start with a question, you can elaborate further, and then ask more questions as long as they relate specifically to the main original question. And then you want to provide a partial solution. You don't want to provide the whole solution. The whole solution will be them actually buying your product. And then of course you want to get your hyperlinks and your hyperlink is going to link to your actual product, your website, your list building, your squeeze page, your landing page, whatever that might be at the end of the goal. But the whole goal here is to lead up to that point where they're going to want to click on it because they have an idea of what you're all about and what your product or service is all about. But up until that point, you do want to provide good, valuable, trustworthy information. Now there are different types of content that you can create, and I'm going to show you in just a minute how to get access to that content, how to know if that content is proven to be like highly engaged content, and you'll see how easy it's going to be. All right. Now, if you chose the affiliate route in the previous video, then it's going to be slightly different because you're selling somebody else's product. You're not really selling your own product. Now, what I find with product and affiliate marketing is they both start out with problem questions, some sort of question that engages the audience. And then of course, like I said earlier, you can ask other questions along the way. And then of course we have problem question, partial resolution, and then you can ask questions and then provide content and your content PDF file can be long. It can be short. In fact, it depends on what it is, but sometimes the shorter, the more straightforward it is, the better. If people can get the content, the resolution, the partial resolution, that they need, then of course they are willing to look at the product. Now as an affiliate, you could send them directly to your affiliate link. That's fine. So you could kind of take the angle of your product up here, but to get better high conversions, what you might want to do is you might want to do problem question, partial resolution being a product itself. And then maybe a hyperlink to the review and bonus of the product. So a review of the product. So could you could be linking them to the review. You could be linking them to a comparison chart. And then at the end of that landing page. So this is the landing page itself. You direct them to the landing page. It provides a review and maybe at the very end provide some sort of valuable bonus. Whereas if they buy through your affiliate link, then you can get commission. So they have more incentive to buy through your affiliate link. Now I will say off the bat, if you are promoting any type of 
niches aside from business or internet marketing or even technology, something that is a general niche like dogs, organic foods, stuff like that. Typically, you may not really need the bonus right here. Your, the bonus here is just giving people an incentive to buy. And this would help if you are in the online business, internet marketing niche. If you are not, then I wouldn't really worry about that too much. You can always test it out and see if it works. But the bonus is there to give an incentive for people to buy through your affiliate link rather than buying through somebody else's affiliate link. Now, if you are a general niche, then like I said, you can do problem question, partial resolution, and you can even do this model here. But instead of directing them just to the review and bonus, you're directing them to just the review. And then at the review, you can review the product, you can compare it with other products to help them make a better decision. Now, with that said, let me jump on over back to Facebook ads, audience insights, and we're going to dig out some angles, questions that you can put into your content. All right. So see you there. So finding content angles, questions, highly engaged questions is actually very easy to do as long as you figure out your demographics. If you don't know your demographics and obviously trying to figure out what content to create is going to be actually very, very hard to do. So now that you know the process up until this point and why I am teaching it this way, what we want to do is we want to go back to where we left off earlier, which is at facebook.com slash ads slash audience dash insights. And as you can see in the previous video, I did a search for dogster right here. And earlier we found that 95% of women 5% men. Now, what's nice about facebook.com is you can actually click over here. So if I wanted to hone in specifically on age bracket 55 to 64, I just click it and it'll isolate it and it'll allow me to see a better picture of just that age bracket, right? So I can see that age bracket, their lifestyle, and I could easily go to pages that are related to this lifestyle. I can see the majority of them are married, education level, and job title. So we can see it looks about the majority. If we, we can also sort this, so we'll sort this by greater down. We can see that they are mainly administrative, perhaps secretaries, management, healthcare and medical, sales, personal care, production, business and financial operations. So a lot of women that have pretty high paying jobs, maybe. So that kind of gives you an idea of what you're selling and how that correlates with maybe their spending habits, their purchase habits, which Facebook ads also shows over here. Now we're specifically interested in content. So if you click on page likes, you can get an idea of the top categories or the top pages that they are in, interested in. So we can see right off the bat, because we are searching for dogs, we can see they are very interested in Dr. Marty Becker, Caesar Milan. So if you don't know these people, these are highly celebrities as far as dogs go causes i'm against animal abuse community dog bless you which is interesting so a lot of dogs you see that animal rescue corpse i love dogs life with dogs family pet so a lot of dog related things right so even retail and consumer merchandise you can see what they're buying so if we just go ahead and go to these pages I'm just going to open them up in new tabs. So what I'm doing here is I'm clicking with my mouse, the scroll button. And what is that is doing is it's just opening up new tabs up at the top. So I'm going to leave it like that. Let's just take a look at Caesar Milan. So we can see he's a public figure 
and he is well known in the dog training area. So anything related to dog, anything related to helping your dog, he is on top of that area. So what we want to do is we just want to look at the content that he has posted up. So what do you do if your dog is stung by a bee? Now, you also want to ask yourself the question, does this directly relate to my product? Because it doesn't directly relate. So if, if you were to look at a content piece like this, would you gradually and naturally be interested in buying a product or buying your product? That's the question that you should ask. Now, if you look through here, we can see that this piece of content got 9,000 likes, 800 shares, but we know Caesar is, is, he's already huge. So we know most of his content is going to be highly engaged. And you know, the content that he puts up is most likely going to get a lot of engagement. So big companies like this, you can easily take a look at and get some competitive intelligence. So we look down here, we can see that just the smiley face of a dog gets a lot more likes and shares. So we can tell off the bat that this particular audience is very highly emotional and gets really excited about dogs and everything like that. So th that's what you're trying to figure out is within the niche itself, what gets them excited, what gets them really angry, what gets them highly engaged. Now, if we go through here, we see most of these seem to be images, but we have ear cleaning here. So routine cleaning. So if you were, let's say, for example, to create a piece of content on cleaning, you might want to hone in first on the problems that dogs have in relation to dog cleaning. So in this case, if you were to read this, you can see routine ear cleaning is a great way to prevent and detect potential ear issues. So you could hone in on maybe a variety of different potential ear issues that dogs have. And then from that point, you can then talk about a partial resolution. So you can bullet point, talk about potential ear issues, maybe common routes that people take and why maybe those common routes may not be as effective. And then you can lead them on to your product or affiliate review. So that's why we're going through here is just getting ideas about what our audience likes and dislikes. Now that we've looked through here, we can also look through here as well. So I'm against animal abuse. So most of this will probably be about animal abuse. But if we're interested in creating content on other areas, just go through here, look at them. You can, what's nice about Facebook is it also allows you to like. And when you click on like here, as you can see, you can like, you can love, you can laugh, you can say, wow, you can sad or angry. Now this allows you to see what people are feeling, right? So it's not just a like button anymore. There's a lot more information and gives it away. So now you can see not just how engaged people are as far as their comments goes, as far as their shares go, but you can also how, see how they feel. So like I said, it doesn't matter if this is a product attack or an affiliate plan of attack. It doesn't matter. Really what you're trying to do right now is simply find the pages that they like and get the information. So you can see page likes here as well. So you can see more pages. So you should have tons and tons of different angles of content that you could potentially create. Now you can also see location, but we're not too interested in that. As of now, you can see activity, which is also nice because it shows you how engaged they are as far as pages, liked, comments, posts, posts shared and ads clicked. So ads clicked is a good thing because if you want to expand this later on, you can see that this 
specific audience is highly engaged as far as ads go. And what does that tell you? If they, they're willing to click on an ad, they're most likely willing to be interested in purchasing. Now you can see device users, we can see iPads, which I'll tell you right off the bat, if somebody has an iPad or in some sort of device like that, that means that that audience typically has some form of disposable income and they're willing to spend money on extra devices or items. Now we can click on household and that gives you an idea of how much they earn, if they, how many homes they earn, how big is their household size and home market value. And of course, what does their spending methods look like? And of course, if you click on purchase, this gives us an idea of retail spending, which is a good idea. And say, for example, you were to go into a niche and you find that the retail spending or online purchases is very, very low. And that might be fine because that might be meaning that offline retail is high. And that might tell you certain purchases might be lower online versus certain purchases on offline are higher. But that also gives you an idea of the direction even your business could take. So we can see here purchase behavior. What do they purchase? They purchase pet products, home and garden, sports and outdoors, household products. So if you say, for example, you build a list of these consumers, what other products could you potentially sell? That is what this graph is telling you. What other products can you sell? So hopefully this gives you a good idea of different content pieces that you could create. As long as you understand that what you might want to do is either start with statistics, start with a question and look at the content and turn it into a question as long as it's a problem question. So like I showed you earlier with the ear infections, you generally speaking want to start out with a question that provokes thoughts in relation to a problem. What kind of problems does your dog's ear have? You know, different ear infections so that you can relate to different people as far as ear infections go. Now, if your product is about dog training and it's not really related to ear infections at all, then obviously in that case, you don't want to take that content angle. So at the end of the day, you want to make sure that it follows a path from the point of the problem question actually relating to your product or service or the affiliate review. So keep that in mind. As long as you understand that everything flows correctly, you'll be able to create a high converting content piece. Now, another question that a lot of people ask is how long or how many words should I write? That really doesn't matter as much. You can take a look at the content pieces that are on the Facebook pages, see how long those content pieces are. If they're really super long, that might be a big indicator that that particular niche likes long content. If it's fairly short, you might want to keep it short, maybe an article page long. So that's a good indication as long as you take a look at several pages and you see a repeating pattern. With that said, let's move on to video number four. Hello and welcome back. This is video number four, and this is going to be about spicing your content up. Now that you understand how to create great engaging content, the first thing I want to say is that we will be using Microsoft Word, which is compatible with both Windows and Mac computers. If you are using another word processing software, I cannot guarantee that it is going to work because this is a time tested process that we have used over and over again. And this is what works well for us. So we will be using that. Second of all, once you have added your content to Microsoft Word, you can go through, use bullet points, you can highlight headlines and everything like that. But in addition to that, what we recommend that you go ahead and do in addition is by heading on over to a website called graphicriver.net, as you can see here. Graphicriver.net is a marketplace that is filled with tons and tons of professional items like stationary designs, design templates that you can easily pick and choose, find the one that fits you in perhaps 
fits your audience, most importantly, and make sure that you use it to your advantage. And this is what is going to help you stand out from everybody else who has plain content. Now, if you take a look under web elements and print, you'll be able to find a lot of different items that you can use to your advantage, such as stationary. So I'm going to open this in a new tab and we'll take a look at it in just a minute. And you can also use newsletters, magazines, e-publishing. So I'm going to just go ahead and open these up and even brochures. We also have access to web elements as well, but we're going to stick with print. And as you can see here, this is stationary item. So what I can do is I can do a search for a particular niche. So let's try dog and see what we get. So right off the bat, we can see that there are stationary and logos just for the dog niche. And what better way of making your content look more professional and more catered towards your specific audience by finding designs that are specifically made for that purpose. So if we take a look at these pieces of content, Envato or GraphicRiver.net, which is the parent company of Graphic River, will allow you to see all the images that are included. So as you can see, you can turn ugly content into something very professional. So we have logos, we have newsletters, we have stationery, and all sorts of really good design templates. Now, in addition to that, we also have e-publishing templates. Now, even though some of these deal with newsletters, we can still utilize the design templates for our content. Now, you'll notice that some of these require a program called InDesign. InDesign is created by Adobe, and you can easily get access to the free trial. And if it's something that you feel like you're going to use over and over again, you can always get access to that. Now, Adobe has something called Creative Cloud, which allows you to pay anywhere from $9 to $48 per month to get access to a huge suite of software tools without having to really dish out $400 or $500 or even $1,000 what it used to cost for every single one of these softwares. Now, to do that, what you can do is head on over to google.com and type in InDesign free trial because sometimes the URL changes. So what you can do is go up to the top here, click download a free trial of Adobe InDesign, which will allow you to edit the design templates. As you can see here, some of them will require Photoshop. And of course, last but not least, if you do not want to download this software and you want somebody else to do it for you, you can always head on over to a website called fiverr.com. And as you can see here, that is F I V E R R.com. And you can simply type in in design and you'll find a variety of people who are in design experts or even Adobe Photoshop experts. And you can simply hand the template to them, hand the content to them. And for five bucks or even 10 or sometimes 20 max, you can get these designers to simply edit your content within InDesign and get it to work right away. Now, keep in mind that if you use something like InDesign to create your content, then you will need to use part number two conversion tactic. If you use something like Microsoft Word, then you can use the WinZip, which is going to be part one of the PDF conversion video. So now that you know how to spice things up, with that said, let's move on to the next video. Hello and welcome to video number five. This is about hyperlinks. First things first, you need to be opening up Microsoft Word, whether you are using a Mac or PC. Uh, as I stated earlier, this is part of our strategy and this is what works for us in relation to the PDF conversion softwares that we have tested. So go ahead and open up Microsoft Word if you can and follow along if you would like to or feel free to watch to the end of this video and follow along later. Now, in order to create a hyperlink, what you need to do 
is you need to highlight the word or words. So if you want to hyperlink the word high domain, you just highlight that. Or let's say, for example, we're going to say click here to learn more about this product. We can highlight that. We can right click it, click on hyperlink. And then, of course, you want to enter the URL right here. Now, Microsoft Word is going to give you different options. You can hyperlink to an existing file or web page, hyperlink within the document itself. You can create a new document or you can set up email addresses. Now, the, for the purpose of this particular video course, remember our goal is to link to our website or the website that we are promoting. So all we want to do is make sure this one is selected and then enter the URL. So in this case, make sure that you have HTTP colon slash slash www.yourdomain.com, whatever that might be. Now, let's say, for example, we'll just do google.com for the sake of simplicity. And up at here, you can target frame. Now, what this means is you have the ability to control the click. So if somebody opens up your PDF file, oftentimes, if you think about it, there are two different situations. Either the PDF file will be downloaded to their computer and then they'll open it up via Adobe Acrobat Reader, or in a different situation, they will click the link and the PDF file will be opened up within their internet browser as a new tab. Now, if that is the case, if they click on the link, by default, the link will open to the web page in the same window as the PDF file. In this case, I will recommend that you choose the target frame to be a new window. And the reason being is because if they click that link and they are in a internet browser, for example, then a new window or a new tab will be opened up. So if they want to refer back to your PDF file, they can always do so. So I would say new window is the best. Now, as you can see, there are other options here, same frame, whole page, parent frame, and other advanced tactics here. But the one that primarily will probably do the best will be new window. Now, you will see an option that says set as default for all hyperlinks. Now, what that means is you're setting new window to all hyperlinks. So let's say, for example, that you have 30 hyperlinks that you created and you forgot to set it at new window or you decide to switch it back to same frame. Instead of having to go one by one by one, all the way through and changing the setting right here. All you have to do is set as default for all hyperlinks, click OK, OK, and you're good to go. And that's it. That's how easy it is to hyperlink a text. Now, if you want a hyperlink, let's say, for example, a shape, you can also do that as well. So if we go over here to insert, and we click on shape and let's say for example we have an arrow and we want to create an arrow like this and we'll make this arrow red and why don't we turn this arrow around and let's actually let's let's point this arrow at this hyperlink and let's say we want to hyperlink this arrow same thing with a shape all you have to do is select it right click hyperlink and do the exact same thing. Now you can do this exact same thing with other items as well. Now, the only thing that you cannot do is let's say for example, that you wanted to hyperlink a section or, but if you had a certain image or certain images clumped together and you wanted to hyperlink a whole section, you would have to have an advanced feature, which is a, PDF conversion tool to do that, which would be part number two. Now, part number one would allow us utilizing WinZip to convert these hyperlinks so that when it is converted to a PDF format, the hyperlinks still work.
Now, you'll notice sometimes if you use free PDF conversion tools that when you do convert to a PDF file, the hyperlinks don't pass through. So the hyperlinks only work within Microsoft Word itself. So I'll see you in the next video and we'll talk about everything you need to gather up until this point so that you can make sure that when you do the conversions, everything will work perfectly. All right, we'll see you there. Hello and welcome back. This is video number six. And in this particular video, what I want to do is just quickly run through and give you a quick recap as far as what you need to have up until this point. So number one, you need to have your attack plan. Either you need to be selling your own product or somebody else's product and figuring that out, figuring out the angles which go into your content and figure out your audience. And then you need to make sure you create your content, make sure that it is angled correctly, utilizing the different angles that I have given you, or you can go ahead and create your own angles, but I've given those to you that work. And then of course, gather your landing page URLs, the actual URL. So you need to have those in hand before you can actually move on to the next step. If you don't have them and they're not live, but you know that they will work in the long run, that is fine as well. You also need to have kind of an idea of what your call to actions are going to be. And what we mean by call to actions is getting people to take action, the hyperlinks, the telling people exactly what they need to do and how are you going to get people to take action? That's basically the call to actions. They can be images. They can be the arrows that I showed you in the previous video and more on that. So those are definite things that you need to have in order to move forward. Now, the next two videos, part number one and part number two are going to help you convert the files to PDF format and ensure that all your hyperlinks work. Because one thing to note is that if you utilize free PDF conversion tools, they don't always convert. Where's the point that your hyperlinks work? So you have to be able to do part one or part two in order to get your hyperlinks to work. So part number one, basically at this point, you need to have a complete finalized Microsoft Word document containing your textual document content. And part number one is going to help you understand how to convert basic text hyperlinks into actual PDF files that have hyperlinks that work. Number two is going to help you. Let's say for example, that you have created some sort of image, maybe an infographic and out of that picture, you have a PDF file. Now the bad side of most PDF conversion tools is that part number one, for example, is not going to work for this. So if you have an infographic and within the image itself, you have images or text in the image itself that say something like click here. You can't actually use Microsoft Word to select a specific area of your image and convert that into a hyperlink. Unfortunately, you will have to utilize part number two. And if you go for part number two, you can essentially achieve part number one. Part number one is basically an option. If you don't really want to achieve part number two. But in my case, I recommend that you just, just go watch part number one to understand it, but get part number two software because that will resolve everything in part number one and in part number two. So with that said, let's move on to the next video. And I'm going to show you how to convert a basic Microsoft Word document with textual hyperlinks into a PDF file that works. All right, let's move on to the next video. Okay. So before we get started and we utilize the part one WinZip software to convert your documents into PDF files, I want to make a note here. Some of you will have Microsoft Word documents versions where if you convert it to PDF right away, the hyperlinks will work. But some of you will have outdated versions of Microsoft Word or you're using something else like pages or a different word processing 
system. And if you are, that's fine. Then you can utilize the specific strategy. But I wanted to make that note first that some of you, if you convert it to PDF and it works, great. You don't really need to go out and buy these softwares. But if you convert it to PDF and you're utilizing an outdated version of the software and you're having problems to get the hyperlinks to convert over to work in the PDF version, then this is the only time that you really will need the part one. Now, the part two, which deals with image PDFs, infographics, and things like that, you will need to have that piece of software. Okay, so that note aside, what we can do is whether you're using Microsoft Word or Pages or OpenOffice, as long as you've hyperlinked it within here, all you need to do is go to winzip.com. That's W-I-N-Z-I-P dot com. Now, winzip.com, the nice thing about this is that you can do much more than just convert. You can add watermarks. So if you want to brand your file, you can do that. You can also automatically resize photos. So the nice thing about this is if you have a Microsoft Word document or a document in general that has these big, huge images, then you know your audience is not going to stay around and stick around to just download these big, big files. So what you can do with WinZip is you can automatically resize these big images. So it goes much further than just hyperlinks. And that's the reason why I wanted to show you this avenue. So as you can see here, WinZip 20, you can zip, unzip, you can convert to PDF, you can do all these other things. Now they have different versions. They have standard version and pro version. And you can see here, you can actually look here. As far as PDF goes, you can create read only PDF. So if you want people and to prevent them from copying your content, you can actually do this. So like I said earlier, you can save a regular Microsoft Word document as a, as a PDF file, just utilizing the Microsoft Word system. But what you can't do is you can't protect it. You can't pr password protect it. You can't make it read only. You can't watermark it. You can't do all these other advanced features. Now, if you go to the site and click on compare, you can obviously see the difference between the standard version and the pro version. Now, if you scroll down here, you'll notice that the WinZip standard version does allow you to convert PDF files and do all these things right here. And this is really what you want. So you really don't necessarily need to have the pro version because that's what you really want to do is just the PDF conversion, right? So in this case, you would only dish out about 30 bucks. So $29.95, that's $30. You can get that. You don't really need the $50 version. So I wanted to offer this to you as a different avenue that you could take if you didn't want to dish out, you know, 50 bucks. Now, would I recommend that you go to this route if you want to do image PDFs and if you want to hyperlink your infographics and your, your things like that? No, I would not re recommend that you go down this route. I would recommend that you do part number two, and I'll show you why. But as far as this goes, this is pretty good for the price. So if, you're, if you want to save 20 bucks, you want to go down this route, that's fine. So what I want to do right now is I open up WinZip and I have the pro version, but like you saw earlier, you don't really need the pro version. The only reason why I got the pro version was because I wanted the other options that came along with WinZip. Now, as you can see here, what you can do is you can check convert to PDF. You can click on options. You can also click on PDF conversion options. And you can also change the resolution. So if you find that your, your Windows Microsoft Word document is very, very big and has these really massive images, you can always tone down the resolution and the image quality. You can convert to a read-only 
so that some people cannot copy your content and you can do other other things as well. So we can click on save here. You can also resize the photos if the photos are too big. And if you click on photo resize settings, you can scale them bigger or even smaller depending on what size it is. Because as you know, when you put an image inside of Microsoft Word, if they're really, really big and you convert it over, they're just gonna convert over at that same size. So these are just some things to think about as far as user experience. You don't want them to get to a point where they're downloading this massive file, essentially. So when you're done and you have chosen your options that you want, all you need to do is simply find the Microsoft Word document, as you can see here, and we can simply drag and drop it right here. So what's this doing right now? It's just converting the file to a PDF file. So I'm going to pause this video and we'll see you when it is complete. So actually it just finished just right now and you can see your files have been converted. It has tried to compress it because it is WinZip. And that's the nice thing about using WinZip is it does try to compress it a little further. So this is our PDF file and I'm just going to drag it over here. And if we double click this PDF file here, we can see that the link is hyperlinking and it goes to Google and there we go. So that works perfectly. That's the first option that you can take to convert your Microsoft Word documents to PDFs. If you have basic hyperlinks and you want to save money and you're on a budget. Now, do I recommend this route if you can spend a little bit more money, maybe an extra 20 or 30 bucks? No, I would recommend that you go on to the next video and try that because what I'm going to about to show you is a software that is as powerful as Adobe Acrobat Pro, which costs about four to five hundred dollars. And instead of spending that amount, you're going to spend a lot less. There are other softwares out there that I have tested that are just as expensive or more that are about a hundred to two to three hundred dollars this software i've used well over a decade and it's one of the original softwares out there and i in my opinion is one of the best and it'll allow you to create hyperlinks for infographics for images and for any spot on the image that you want so with that said let's move on to the next video welcome back in this particular video, I'm going to share with you a piece of software that I wish I had all along because I have downloaded so many PDF conversion softwares out there and I've tried to do really basic things that you thought were basic, such as infographics and trying to hyperlink specific areas of the image only to come out empty handed until I found this piece of software. So instead of trying to dish out hundreds of dollars on other pieces of software, I recommend this one right here. So I'm going to walk you through step by step the different options that you have. Now, if you go to a site called cutepdf.com, that's C U T E PDF.com, this is where you want to be. Now, as you can see here, the cute PDF writer, this is free. And what this allows you to do is allows you to turn your printer essentially into a PDF conversion software. So any, any type of word processing software, any internet browser, any software that allows you to print a document will allow you to convert that document into a PDF file. So how amazing is that? So that is free. Now, the problem with just this right here is that if you try to convert a document like I showed you earlier that has a hyperlink inside of it, the hyperlink will not pass over to the PDF file. So if you just want to convert files into PDFs, this is all you need. But in this case and in this video course, we want to convert our hyperlinks into PDF files that have working hyperlinks, right? So in order to do that, you do need to have the QPDF professional version. Now there are other softwares out here, such as the QPDF editor, which is free. 
in the custom PDF converter. You don't really need this unless you are going to build a piece of software that you want to have the ability to convert PDFs. So really what it comes down to is to make this process work, you need to go ahead and download this. So click on free download and go ahead and install that. And then you will need the Qt PDF Professional. Now, as you can see here, typically it is $89.95. So typically it's about $90, but for now it's about 50 bucks. So who knows, this could change as you're watching it. Uh, but overall, I, I do believe this is, is about the cheapest that I've seen for what you can do. Now, as you can see, you can, you can read through here, but I'm not going to read through, but basically you can do everything in part one. You can do everything as far as password protection, everything that WinZip can do. You can protect it. You can secure it. You can create hyperlinks using a drag and drop tool. So you can highlight a specific section a specific image and convert that specific section into a hyperlink. And that is something that you cannot do without utilizing the Adobe Acrobat Pro. All right. So this is actually a big savings and I wish I had this software long, long ago. So I highly recommend this. Go ahead, download it and you can try it first if you want to and make sure it works on your computer. Now the downside with this is it only works with Windows. It does not work with Mac. If this is the case, you will need to have something like WinZip if WinZip is compatible with Mac, or you will need to download the Adobe Acrobat Pro. But instead of dishing out the 400, 500 up front, you do have an option of getting the Adobe Creative version which allows you to pay a very small monthly fee to download the software. So you can use that, download it, pay us a, a very low monthly fee to utilize it when you need to, and you can use it as you wish. So that's just the only downside. Once you have installed the basic version of Qt PDF, that will be on your system. And anytime you try to print something, I'll press control print here, click change. You'll actually see the cute PDF writer here. So anytime you can print something, you can turn that into a PDF file right here. Now, once you have the cute PDF pro version installed, when you press this, it'll automatically convert it to a PDF with working hyperlinks. Now what I want to do is I'm just going to show you an example. So I'm going to go over here to my test folder and I'm going to show you an infographic that I have turned into a PDF file. So this is a PDF file that I created with PictoChart, which is a infographic creator. And as you can see, I basically created this, this full on image and within the image itself, you can see here, it says click for all bonuses. Now within Microsoft Word, you can't hyperlink an area within an image, right? So in order to do that, you have to have QPDF professional. Now to do this, if I click on commenting and I click on link tool, what this will allow me to do is it allow me to hyperlink a specific area of the image. Okay. So all you need to do is simply go down here and I have created this section to turn into a hyperlink. So all I need to do is drag and select this area with my mouse. Once that's done, it basically tells me that I can link them to a World Wide web link go to remote page, open a file or go to a page. So I'm going to do World Wide web link and we're going to do HTTP colon slash slash www dot. I'll just do google.com for the sake of simplicity. We'll click on okay. And we have hyperlinked this right here. I can also hyperlink specific things like specific areas. And you can't really do this with any other tool except for the pro version of the Adobe Acrobat pro. So I can do the same thing here. Now I'm going to go back to the viewer. I'm going to go ahead and click save. 
I'm going to go ahead and close this down. And let's just go ahead and open this up here. And there we go. So you can see that I've hyperlinked this whole section. Now, if I move my mouse over this, you can see the hyperlink has disappeared. So how amazing is that? Now, I did not do it to the second one, so it does not show that here. But if I click on this, if all works, it should go to google.com. And we can see that it does indeed go to google.com and it works perfectly. So there we go. Now, same thing with other PDF documents. You can use the same tool here to do that. And if you convert a document that already has hyperlinks that were created in Microsoft Word, it'll automatically create the hyperlinks for you so you don't have to do anything else. So you can do much more than that within QPDF Professional, but I'm not really going to cover that right now because this is really what we wanted to do, right? So with that said, you are done. You have a piece of software that is powerful if you have a PC, if you have a Mac. Unfortunately, you will have to use the Adobe Acrobat Pro, which as long as you use the creative version, you can actually get away with spending less than about 20 bucks a month by just going that route. So with that said, let's move on to the next video and I'm going to show you step by step uh, what sites you can upload your PDF files to to get your backlinks to your PDF files and backlinking to the websites that you're promoting, the affiliate sites you're promoting, the, your review sites you're promoting and get a boost in search engine ranking. Congratulations, you have reached the end of this video course. And in this particular video, you should have your PDF in hand, ready to be uploaded and shared with social community sites that are basically document sharing sites. Now, the sites that I'm about to show you are current as of now. But let's say, for example, five years down the road, I want to give you a different option and an avenue that you can take so that you can keep up and updated with the times. So first things first, if you head on over to google.com and you type in top document sharing sites, or you can have a different variation such as top PDF sharing site or top document social communities. Or if you type that in and you scroll all the way to the very bottom, Google will also give you different keywords to search for. Now, I wanted to give you this route because sometimes sites come and go, unfortunately, and that's reality. And because of that, you want to make sure that you're constantly uploading your PDF files to sites that are high authority sites that have a lot of traffic that I have in Google's eyes enough authority that if you have your links, your PDF files on there, that a link from them is considered high authority. And therefore it passes on to your website and gives you the votes that you need. So this is another route that you can take. Now I'm going to show you now specific sites that you can upload your PDF files to and get some backlinks. Now, it really comes to the point that you really don't need to have a huge amount of backlinks. Just a few from very, very high authority sites is important to have. One site is pdfsr.com. pdfsr.com is a PDF sharing social community where you can upload your files and make sure that you publish them and keep them public so that, for, so that everybody can see them and that Google can index them. So this is one site. Google Docs is another site. Just keep in mind that when you upload your documents to Google, to make sure that the document settings and permissions are set as public. Most people don't think about Google as being a site that you can get links from, but it is. You can use Google properties, Yahoo properties, other properties that are big and authoritative like these sites to get backlinks. Another site is slideshare.net. Another one is scribd, S-C-R-I-B-D.com. You'll find that if you search for a lot of PDF files, you will actually run into 
this specific site. This is actually, if you get this, your PDF files on this site, it's definitely highly recommended. And of course we have issuu.com, but definitely get it on scribd.com and the other sites that I've recommended. And if you want to go all out, look for the top document sharing sites for your specific year. So if it is 2017, 2018, or even 2020, do a search for that keyword plus that year, and you'll be able to keep up to date with everything that's happening. Now, in addition to this, what you can do is you can get other people to share that link to your PDF file via other social sharing sites. So essentially you are putting backlinks towards that particular PDF file and therefore it gets ranked. And when that gets ranked, so does your links to from your PDF file to your website or to your landing page. So essentially you could get social signals as long as you point them to your PDF file that is uploaded on these high authority sites. One thing that we have always noticed is that Google is okay if you link a bunch of backlinks to a file or to a link that is located on a high authority site. If you put a lot of links towards your site, then obviously it looks really fake. But because these sites have such high authority, they're more likely to have a lot of backlinks linking to them already. It's sort of like the concept of you uploading a video to YouTube and sending a lot of social backlinks to that particular YouTube video. It's okay because that site is such high authority and in Google's eyes, it's a lot more natural because these sites already get a bunch of backlinks. So that's a second strategy on top of the first strategy that you can implement. So with that said, make sure that you go ahead and implement everything that I have taught you to not only get traffic, but to also get high converting traffic so you can convert your prospects into buyers. So thanks for watching and please go take action.